Have you ever been put off gardening because you don't know much about it or worse still, you're renting and you think, why should I put in all this effort if I'm gonna have to move out anyway? Well, hold on to your trowel because I'm about to introduce you to someone who's not only renting, but up until a couple of years ago, knew nothing about gardening. You're gonna love this. This is the amazing garden of Darren Partridge. By day, a humble research laboratory manager, but in his spare time, a super gardener extraordinaire. started as a way to honour his great aunt. My great aunt passed away a couple of years back and she loved her petunias. The day before she passed away, she actually planted some petunias out. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to finish off what she started. Little did I appreciate just how much work they were going to be though. By about midsummer, I was done with deadheading petunias. Having been bitten by the gardening bug, but no longer loving his petunias, Darren was at a bit of a loss as to what to plant next, until his then housemate came home with a struggling native plant. He said, can you fix this for me? And I said, I don't, I don't think so. I think, it's, I think it's due to go to the compost bin. Uh, but what is it? And he said, it's a kangaroo paw. And I said, a what? <laughs> I've never heard of a kangaroo paw. But my curiosity got the better of me and I looked it up online and I was amazed by what I saw. I went to the native nursery, got my kangaroo paw and then picked up about a hundred other plants at the same time. I was just blown away by what was available in the nursery and just fell in love with so many different varieties and textures and colours. What were some of the challenges you faced when you started to set the garden up? Uh, the aspect was a, uh, a major challenge, or a major consideration at least. Uh, you get a north-facing sun that just, you know, pelts down on this pavement. Uh, but in the winter, it's full shade. So uh, you've got to go with some plants that are going to tolerate that, that real blistering sun and then, you know, at least filtered light uh, in, in the winter. Wind is an issue here, even though we are in a small courtyard uh, with the sun. It's about just going Western Australian, I say, in the containers. They love their sun, the Western Australian plants. And this courtyard gives you that opportunity to play with those Western Australian natives. The first thing I noticed when I stepped into Darren's backyard is the layers and the staging of the plants. They're clustered together. You don't notice that they're pretty much all in pots. All of the pots are literally shading and protecting each other from the sun, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely, and that's the whole idea. I mean, you want to retain that uh, moisture as long as possible to save on water. Like, I'm trying to create a cottage garden and I want it to look full, and I want it to look different at every angle. So the height and the layers, and mm. it's, it's really important to, to work with all that. I feel like I'm in a lolly shop. Do you have any <laughs> favourites that you want to talk to, about? It's a good way to describe it. Uh, <laughs> the Leshenaltia by Lobo is probably my favourite. Uh, the Blue is amazing and it's a Western Australian plant. It lives in sand, it's, it lives in desolate soils, yet it produces just amazing colour. The yellow bells here, I mean, look at how much flower is on it. Yeah, I mean, this flowers for such a long time as well. It starts to open in about winter and it just keeps going uh, right into the summer. It's another Western Australian. It's grafted, this one. It's recommended to be in a container, especially on the, on the East Coast, but yeah, I love it. It's, it's a winner all the time. Baronias? Yeah. You've got more than your fair share. They're not the easiest plants to grow. What's the favourite one here? My favourite would probably be the one over there on the hanging basket, yep. the Baronia saprolifera. Uh, it is a difficult one to grow, I've been told, but I've had excellent success with it. I've, it, I've not lost one yet. I have lost other baronias in the past. You, they don't like to be waterlogged um, and they will just drop from root rot um, almost overnight sometimes without, with very little warning. So what sort of soil have you used in this? This is uh, just native potting mix. Is, uh, I mean, a good native potting mix is all I, 
all they require. Uh, just keeping the root, uh, the root ball moist, uh, especially for the baronias, is to keep it moist and cool. I have my baronias south facing, uh, so that helps keep them out of the direct sun, um, or at least in direct light. So this garden here is two years old. It's two years old. Yeah. And your gardening heritage is effectively two years old. Yeah. What would you say to people that are setting out? Read, 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 read. Uh, fall in love with learning about gardening and embrace the learning. Uh, don't be afraid of it and don't be afraid to fail at it. Because um, every time you fail, you are learning still. I like to be the best I can be at something. If I'm going to do something, I mean, I'll put everything into it to make sure I do it as well as I can. If I'm not satisfied, I'll keep working at it. And the problem with gardening is that you're never quite satisfied. What was motivated by a few pots of petunias has been transformed into a native garden wonderland. And if a renter like Darren can do it and go from garden zero to horticulture hero in less than two years, then what's stopping you? Thank you.